We'll start this question with Nikki Lorenzo. The question is, what will you do as a legislator to help preserve the, the Osage culture? Please be specific. Uh, this is an area that's very important to me, and it would mean making sure that our current cultural and preservation department is given the uh, money and, and resources that are needed to continue its process in preserving with our culture and artifacts. And also, preserving the culture is is uh, we, we walk in two worlds and often we have our illogical clothes on or we're thinking in Osage language and then other times we're in our, in our uh, other dress and we're at our jobs that may not be related to our Osage culture. So it, it's important again to, to look at how we can best preserve and take care and nurture what we have and provide whatever resources, whatever understanding we can to continue with this preservation of the culture. I was raised culturally. I, uh, I'm three quarters Osage. Not that this is about blood quantum, but I was. That's that's who I am. I was raised uh, by full bloods, and it is very important to integrate our culture at every step of the way. It is one of the strategic goals for the executive branch right now. We make sure that we pray before everything we do, whether it be a meeting or, um, of course, always before we eat, but uh, that, because that's how we do things. I was in a, a policy procedure meeting and we had a, a member of the executive branch. And I was very offended because we had a full blood, full blood tribal elder who was very disrespected um, during the policy meeting, who had years of policy uh, as a policy analyst. And uh, so I did say something because um, that's, that's not who we are and that's you know, not how we do things. And so that has to be integrated every step of the way. I think that we do have many things in place as far as right now that, that says we should be protecting our culture and uh, making sure that it is. Uh, included in everything that we do. So I would support uh, the cultural uh, cultural center as well as the museum, um, whatever we needed, because that's that's just who I am. That's how I was raised, and um, I'll always be here. So. Thank you. Um, I was raised by my old grandmother and my half-breed grandpa, and I learned a lot from them. I worked with Monty at the museum in the summer, and they taught me a lot. And I also used to deliver lunches to elders here in Brainwaters. And I listen. And that's a big part of being a conference person is listening. So I learned a lot and I want to see it preserved. And I'd like to even um, reach out to people that are out of our area to help them understand their culture better because if we don't know where we come from, can't see where we're going. That's, that's I was smart enough to bring a pen up here. I was not smart enough to make sure that the pen wrote before I brought it up here. Could you repeat the question, please? Yes. What will you do as a legislator to help preserve the Osage culture? Please be specific. The reason I asked you to repeat the question was because it's asking what would I do as a legislator? And the fact is, as legislators doing our job, what can we do? We can appropriate money and write laws that help preserve and protect and promote the culture. So uh, my goal would be and is to uh, look at all the areas of our government that serve to promote the culture and serve to protect it. That's the language program. That's also the cultural center, the historic preservation department the museum, and there's others. Not just those departments, but also individuals and groups. That's what the foundation has done. It's creating a way for individuals that want to promote the culture to utilize resources from there. 
So as a legislature, what I do to promote the culture is to make sure that there's monies available to those areas that need it, that do promote the culture and do preserve the culture. I am, um, there's a cultural committee, and I have to tell you that I didn't put myself on the cultural committee in the beginning because I wanted to let some of the people that were closer to the culture over a lifetime than I felt like I was lead the way there. But then I felt like I grew into it. So this last year, I sat on the cultural committee, and I enjoyed it, and I learned a lot in six years. So I am, as a legislator, I think the way that we help preserve and promote the culture is by prioritizing funds for those areas. Thank you. Thank you. As, as some of you may already know, I was, uh, am one of the attorneys of record on the case of uh, William Fletcher versus the United States. And in the course of uh, litigating that case, I spent many days in the archives down in uh, Texas and uh, did a significant amount of research regarding the tribe. And uh, the, the bottom line is the Osage Nation is a federally recognized tribe. All of our federal assistance, our relationship with the federal government, all of that emanates from our status as a federally recognized tribe. A federally recognized tribe has to have culture, it has to have a land base, and it is supposed to have a language. So it is absolutely critical that uh, we, uh, in the event that any of us are selected to be a legislator, uh, promote the cultural values. Getting back to uh, what I mentioned about doing research for the Fletcher case, there was a lawyer back in the 1950s, and I don't know if I have his correct first name. Uh, his last name was Lavity. I think his first name may have been Frank. And he did a, a paper, a prospectus back in the 1950s, to try to save the tribe from termination. And that council, that council that was seated at that time, I believe Frank may have been a member, or he may have been some kind of, of counselor to the, to the tribal council. I, I can't tell you what the specific makeup was. But they fought ferociously to keep the tribe from being terminated, because it was on the list to be terminated along with the Menominee and, and many other tribes that were terminated in that era. There was also a senator from Oklahoma, Senator Stidham, who helped in that effort. And I've been through all of those records. So it, it's not as though it hasn't been attempted in the past. It's not as though it couldn't be attempted in, in the future if the tribe were to uh, lose, uh, lose its way uh, culturally. So it's absolutely important. In terms of what I would do to implement uh, those cultural uh, standards, uh, again, the daycares, the Head Stars, the children are learning how to speak the Osage language. Uh, my uh, boy told me this morning uh, what I was, and it was the Osage, you know, word for woman, and then he's telling me, I had a hand that was on, I had a beaded hand, and he said, Chalkies, you'd say, because it was a red hand. And he, he's learning all of this, but I, I'm scared that he's not going to be able to uh, retain it because he's graduating from Head Start next week. So we need to keep those programs available and make them accessible and affordable to our Osage people. Also, uh, there are many historic properties throughout Osage County. There's the tall chief home here in Fairfax. There are other homes that are historic Osage homes. Those need to be acquired by the tribe and preserved, and I would support that in uh, whatever uh, shape or form that took. Uh, there's also our museum and gift shop. I was visiting with some tribal members in uh, Boston, and they wanted to know what happened to the gift shop. They said they'd been Googling it for two years and didn't know what happened to it. Uh, that's something that needs to change. That gift shop uh, was, was an important part of our outreach to our people and, and making sure that um, they had the uh, uh, implements available to them to be able to, to dress and participate. Uh, thank you. Now, each of you will have one minute in rebuttal. And we'll start with uh, Nikki Lorenzo. Uh, last, last weekend in uh, Northern California, I had an opportunity to meet a young man, a young Osage man who's attending uh, University of California, Davis and Sacramento area. And he's working on a seed project. So he's, the seeds are ancient seeds and he's preserving them and seeing how he can make this a program that will inf we can infuse with our Osage culture. And I talked with him about starting a charter school. A charter school would be some, an Osage charter school that we could have in place for our, our children that daily we would have the cultural and the academics. And this young man said, I would come home in a heartbeat if you would do that. 
So these are areas I think that we need to continue to look at and to promote. I guess I will just repeat that I would support all of our cultural pro programs and just take a look at where you know where we are. That's that's who I am, and I uh, if I'm hopefully I'm elected, but if I'm not, I'll still be do, here doing the same thing, being among our people. So I, again, I'm just going to repeat that I would support culture in probably every way because that is who we are, and uh, I have. I think that we have several programs in place. Again, um, we have classes that are taught by Addie and then at the Cultural Center. You can learn how to do some things online. And I was asked by a gentleman in New Mexico last week, what, we're, what are we gonna do for those outside of the reservation? And I said, there are some things you just can't videotape. We can't show you. You need to come home. You need to come here and learn it from us. We can't teach it overnight. And uh, so, thank you. Josie Pelch. I'm actually satisfied with my answer. And uh, so we'll move to Shannon Edwards. I'm satisfied with my answer also. And the final respondent on this question is Amanda Proctor. Again, in the spirit of, of rebuttal, uh, I would like to address something that Congresswoman Edwards said. She, she stated that uh, the legislature's power is somewhat uh, limited in terms of uh, promoting culture. And, and I uh, disagree with that. I think that the legislature set policy, and there's a great amount of policy to be set in this area. Um, even the uh, bill to promote land acquisition, that, that also, I think, has a cultural underpinning. All of those things can emanate uh, from, from the Congress. We set policy, we appropriate money to go along with that policy, and we hope that it would be implemented by the executive branch. Uh, but we don't have a whole lot of time left. I mean, a lot of these historic properties are are uh, in disrepair, the land is falling out of restriction, you have to meet certain criteria to be a qualified Indian landowner, we're losing uh, those people, we're losing those lands. So um, we've got to set those policies, and I know some of those policies have already been addressed, but um, you know, it, it just needs to be a great priority uh, moving forward for the Congress. Thank you.